Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to be tackling masculine nouns of the first declension. So what does this mean? Well, masculine, again, this is referring not to um, any natural gender, but grammatical gender. So things that may or may not be masculine in reality, but are, at least for the purposes of the language, grammatically considered masculine. Nouns as opposed to verbs, but first declension, remember, we learned these in our chapter 4 of uh, Shelmerdine's text, uh, tended to be feminine. So these are some masculine exceptions to the rule. These are actually fairly rare as far as Greek goes, uh, but it's important that you learn them and it's easy to learn them early on. So we're going to uh, as often get a big chart up here on the board uh, and see where we can go from here. So let me start by getting a good color for the, uh, the lines. Nice little gray there. And we're going to try to pack a whole lot of information in here. Love Photoshop for being able to fix your errors with just a click of a button. All right, here we are, and let's start populating this. So we're getting used to how this kind of works. We'll have cases over here, and I'll divide into singular up top and plural at the bottom. So we'll have nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and then here we will place evocative. Again, we won't have an article, but we'll be able to work with it. And then for the plural, again, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and then here, kind of hanging off at the bottom of the chart, evocative. All right. And then what we'll populate the rest of this with is the article over here, which we just learned in the last lesson. Uh, and then we're going to be working with two words, the word for judge and the word for young man. So in Greek culture, you can imagine that only judges were, judges happen to be men. And a young man, obviously, these, you know, physically, these will be masculine items. And that's one reason that even though they're first declension feminine forms, they refer to masculine objects in reality and therefore take on a, a grammatically masculine gender, even though their declension tends to be of the type that's feminine. Uh, Aristophanes actually gets really into this and makes fun of these sorts of issues in uh, his play The Clouds, but we're not going to get into all the complications right now. We're just going to keep this easy. And then we're going to look at the endings in particular of these two types. And you'll remember from learning first declension nouns uh, of the feminine uh, persuasion, I'd say, that we had four different types, four different classes. We had A, B, and then C and D. So A and B, A had a long eta, this was post great vowel shift. B had a long alpha. And then both C and D had short alphas in the, um, I guess I'll just write it out that way, in the nominative forms. But then, um, you know, this one, D, was protected by epsilon, iota, or rho from the great vowel shift. But that's. That's review, we don't need to talk about that right now. Let's forget about that for a second and get back to the task at hand, which is figuring out how we're going to formulate all of these forms, I suppose, articles with these nouns, both judge and young man, which in terms of their declension would remind most Greeks, oh, pardon, endings, um, of a feminine noun, but actually are in fact masculine. So let's go through the masculine articles that we had. We had ha, again, proclitic, but rough breathing, two, diphthong, omicron, upsilon, and then we had to, note the uh, circumflex on both the genitive and dative, ton here in the accusative. I'm going to make this grave because we're going to follow this uh, article with either of these nouns. And then we had the vocative. Again, it's not an article, so maybe uh, mark that, mark that here. Not an article, but... We're going to use it. Omega, smooth breathing, and circumflex. And then in, in the plural, we had hoi. Again, proclitic starts with a vowel or, or diphthong. Uh, tone, tois, tus. Again, I'll make that grave. And then again, o, 
no difference between singular and plural vocative, that's just the form. All right, and then we're going to look at the word for judge, and I'll give you the nominative here. It is krites. What do you think comes from krites? Well, critical. That's If you're critical, you're a judge of something. Uh, these could be judges in either law courts, but also just a judge of beauty, a judge of an athletic event, um, somebody who is discerning, who is critical. Uh, this is what krites means. So again, accent is on the ultima. Uh, we'll see if this changes as we go through. So ha krites, and two, now we need to make this genitive. And the way that we do that, because it is masculine, is this omicron, upsilon, diphthong with a circumflex over the second vowel of the diphthong, but over the diphthong itself. So we're saying tu kri tu, of the judge. And then in the uh, dative singular, it, you would think that this might be, well, let's see, we're just kind of rhyming here, tu kri tu, would that be to kri to? No. This is where the uh, first declension kind of rears its ugly head again, and it's tu crite, so this, or uh, to crite. So we have nominative ho crites, masculine article, masculine noun, but of the first declension, it might seem feminine. Here in the genitive, this tu crite tells you that this is a masculine noun of the first declension. If you were to look this up in a dictionary, uh, you'd see crites. Cretu ho. So nominative, genitive, article telling us the gender. So crites, we're saying, well, that might be feminine. It's definitely first declension. But this cretu, this ending of the omicron, upsilon, diphthong, tells us that we're working in a masculine zone. And that's proven more by that article. Well, good. So, but here, by the time we get to the date, if we're back in a more kind of standard first declension attitude, this will continue into the accusative, tong cretain. Now, the vocative is interesting. We're going to have a short alpha. So I'll mark that as short. Again, your textbook won't do that, uh, but then a uh, cute accent over that alpha. O krita. Um, we'll notice this when we get to second declension nouns. Uh, in the j nominative, they tend to end in omicron sigma in the masculine, and then end at, with a short epsilon. So you'd say, O Adelphe, O brother, uh, with a short epsilon. Uh, this is the same sort of pattern we see here. But for right now, just note that we have ho krites, tu kritu, to krite, ton kritain, and then o krita. Now let's move to the plural. This is going to be a little bit more regular. So we have hoi kritai, again, first declension ending, but with masculine article. Tone kritone. And as always, circumflex accent over the first declension om omega nu ending. And then tois here, but we'll have kritais with an alpha iota over here. It's an alpha. Tois kritais, and then in the accusative plural, again, this will be a long alpha, tus kritas, okay? And then in the plural, uh, vocatives are always the same as the uh, nominative, so we have kritai. That's another rule like we learned with the uh, neuter last time. Nominative is the same here as the vocative, always in the plural. So that's a nice trick to remember as you move through. These might differ between nominative and vocative in the singular, but by the time we get to the plural, they're always going to be the same. Good. So we've had the word for judge. Now let's talk about the word for young man, which is neanias. Neanias. So accent on the penult. Um, here we have a long alpha sigma ending. Uh, so this is much like our quora verb uh, noun, but we have a sigma at the end. Again, this isn't, you know, this eta sigma or this alpha sigma look a bit like regular first declension uh, genitive singulars. We'd have quoras, right? Or um, let's see, what was it? Timace. So accent will give this away. 
Uh, this one's a little bit trickier. You just need to know that neonias is a nominative singular first declension noun versus koras, which is genitive singular first declension feminine. Sometimes there's nothing to do but rote memorization, I'm sad to say. All right, but here we have neonias, and now in the genitive singular, we're going to again get this kind of more masculine looking ending, neoniu. Neoniu. So again, just like Tokri 2. But as we move through, we're going to see we had etas over here, but we're going to have long alphas on this side. So neonia, iota subscript, long alpha, accent still on the iota. And then for the accusative, ton, neonian, long alpha. And then in the uh, vocative, we're going to again lose the sigma. So we have neonia. Good. So now when we get to the plural, it's going to be, again, the plurals become much more regular. So we're going to have nea nei, and again, accent on the first iota. Now, nea neon. And where's that accent going to go? Well, because this is feminine, or not, sorry, not feminine, first declension, I should say. Because this is first declension, we're going to have this form that was originally alpha omega nu, but then condensed into omega nu. That original acute followed by a, a, a you know a own becomes a own. So here we have nan ni own. The accent actually moves to the ultima. Um, this is weird, but we've gotten used to seeing this at this point. So nothing new. And now in the accusative, again we're just going to be following. Nea, nia, sorry, I forgot the iota there, but we need that for the accent. And then in the accusative, neonias with a long alpha here. So this is funny. Um, these two, the nominative singular and the accusative plural, are identical. Uh, that doesn't happen too often, at least not in the uh, uh, in a masculine or feminine you know noun. This is weird, uh, but this is just something that you have to know uh, as often. But then we do have this nice secret. In the plural, nominatives are always equal to vocatives, so we know that this is going to be nea, ni, i. So let us go to our endings now and kind of summarize both our type A and type B first declension masculine endings. So type A, we had long eta sigma, and here we have long alpha sigma. That's basically the difference between the two classes. They both end in oo here. And then they have the iota subscript. And then add the new. So this, you know, this is somewhat familiar, except we have, you know, this is very different from feminine nouns of the first declension. And then also we should note here that the alpha short alpha is the nominative or the vocative ending. Now in the plural again, this will be a bit more regular, eyes on both sides. Actually, I, let me just, uh, because we know these are going to be identical, let's just do one center of a column. So I and then own, and now own will always have a circumflex. Ice. I'm not writing accents over the rest of these because the accent will depend on where the accent falls in the verb or on the word, sorry. We have krites, accent on the ultima, and we see that the accent stays there. Here it's on the iota, the penult, which stays there in most situations except the genitive plural as we've come to expect. So I own ice, as, long alpha sigma. Again, this looks a lot like this. <laughs> And then down here, again, in the vocative plural, I. Good. That was a lot, but we did it, and we fit it in a small chart. Uh, so next time, we're, we're going to learn the imp uh, imperfect active verb. So we're actually going to get to some past tense. So uh, join me there, and I'll see you then.